Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. Glad to be with you today. It's a beautiful day here up in the mountains, kind of chilly, but that's okay. And I hope where you are living and figuring out things that you're having a beautiful day. And even if the weather's awful, you can still have a beautiful day when we think about what God wants in our lives and what we can do for him. Well, this morning I want to continue my little week on Matthew 5 and 6. As I said in the beginning, this is part of what is known as the Sermon on the Mount. This was Jesus' first major teaching after he started his ministry. And in these chapters, chapters 5, 6, 7, he outlines a lot of themes and ideas that define who he is and what he was about and who we're supposed to be. Now, I want to say to you this morning that this passage, Matthew 5, 43 through 48, is hard. It's hard to hear. It's hard to think about. And it's especially hard to do. But the more we listen, the more we learn, and the more we follow his words, the better life gets. And the easier it becomes. So let me read this, and it won't take long for you to see what I'm talking about here. Here's what Jesus says. You have heard the law that says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. If you love only those who love you, what reward is there for you? Even corrupt tax collectors do that. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Wow, like I said, this is hard. We kind of want to stop, we meaning most people, and for those of the rest of us at times, we kind of want to stop at the first verse. You've heard the law that says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. That's a good place to stop. Yep, I understand that. That appeals to my, both, my most basic instincts. That's what I want to do sometimes. And it's being human. I mean, it really is. There's, there's, no, there's no condemning you because of that. But Jesus says we're to be something else. You see, following God is not for sissies. And it's not for the weak. And it's not for those who can't do anything else. Following God is for the strong. And the more you follow him, stronger you get. It doesn't matter where you are starting on your journey. What matters is that you are continuing on the journey. So he goes on to say, you've heard this, but I say love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. Jesus says to love our enemies. What does that mean? Well, it means whatever it needs to mean. It says to love your enemies. And it goes on to say, well, if you don't just love your friends, how's that, how are you different from anybody else? And he uses this phrase, which probably you and I don't understand, though I think a lot of people feel this way. He says, even the corrupt tax collectors 
do that. I guess tax collectors were about as low as you could be in society in Jesus' day. And they were known for being very, very corrupt. So he says, if you just love those who love you, you're not any different than those guys. He goes on to say that even pagans do that. Yet God comes to you and me to be different. I know it's hard. Nobody said it's going to be easy. And maybe we have to start loving in small steps. But one of the things that's for sure is that we have to start loving our enemies if we want to call ourselves Christians. If we want to be followers of the Lord, we have to do this. I remember years ago I preached on this passage and afterwards one of the church members came up to me and said, the whole time you were preaching, I kept telling myself, I know he's right, I know he's right, I know he's right. She says, but it's so hard. <laughs> yep, it is. I grant you that. And you're not going to be perfect at it. What you need to be is a little better at it than you were the first time. Because it says here that, that God shines on the just and the unjust. He sends the rain on the good and the bad. I think part of the reason we want to be even with our enemies is because they deserve it. And probably they do. But what we don't grasp and what we have to grasp is that God knows that too. And he will exact justice. We don't have to. We want to. We feel righteous about it. We feel like they deserve it. But think of it this way. For those who dislike you, are you going to get them to change by disliking them back? Are you going to get them to stop disliking you because you dislike them even more? The only option here is to try a different approach. Well, why should I care whether they like me or not? Well, I don't know. Maybe it's your family member. That's a good reason why. Maybe it's your neighbor and you have to share a border whether you want to or not. Maybe it's your boss and you can't find another job. I don't know. Does it really matter? You see, by, by returning anger and hatred with love, we get the opportunity to do two things. One, live our lives differently than that and demonstrate God's compassion. And two, to give that person a chance to change. Now, there are no guarantees here. I don't expect you can do this one or two times and wow, everything's great. But if you don't do it, how's it ever going to get any better? You see, God wants us to live a life that reflects him to everybody, even our enemies. So I hope you'll think about this. I'm not suggesting for one moment that you haven't been wounded or injured by someone. Absolutely not. I've been, I'll be again. But I am suggesting if we follow the teachings of Jesus, if we allow his words to give life to our lives, we will find more life than we ever imagined. Well, thanks for listening. Hope you have an incredible day. If you have a prayer concern or need, just let us know. We'll do everything we can, as fast as we can, to help meet your need. God bless you. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you again.